You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast, where today I will be giving you uh, sharing an experience I recently had, which was a great lesson in patience and persistence and frustration and all this kind of stuff. It's a kind of a funny, difficult story, um, but after I'd done it, I thought about it the next day and I was like, all right, I suppose I better tell everybody about this and they can all laugh at my expense. Um, but I think some good things came from it as well. So I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Before I get on to that, head on over to anxietypodcast.com uh, where you can find your End Anxiety Toolkit and the five-week course to live forever. No, the five-week course to overcome anxiety. Um, also, uh, as you guys used know, I used to do a lot of uh, coaching, like one-on-one coaching, and I've recently been doing a bit um, I now, obviously, uh, as you probably know, if you're a regular list, regular listener, I have a full time job, and that uh, takes up a lot of my time. But I've allocated an hour or two a week to do one on one coaching with people. So if you have, if that's something you've always wanted to do, and uh, realized that I'd stop talking about it for a while, um, I do allocate an hour or two a week to jump on the phone and chat to people. I do really love the one on one interaction. I love it when people come on the phone and say, "Look." Here's my story. This is what I'm going through specifically. What would you do if you were me? What insights do you have from all of the experience you have, which you think would be useful? Um, I love it. Like I love doing that stuff and I missed it. So I've introduced, uh, like I said, just one or two a week. Um, If that's something you want to do, you can go to the coaching page at uh, anxietypodcast.com and fill out the application form. It's right at the bottom of the page. There's five questions probably. It'll take a couple of minutes and that's kind of the initial step in the process. And then I'll get in touch and I can tell you more about it. But yeah, it's just... I, I like this. Uh, the one to many is great with the podcast, but sometimes just getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, and as I've talked about before, me working with mentors in my life, having people kind of sometimes just give you permission or answer specific questions or s- say, yeah, Tim, but what you say is talking to most people, but I'm special and I'm different. And so cool. Let's talk about it. Um, but anyway, so that's out there again. If, uh, sort of supply is limited so if you have to wait a while it's because uh i'm chatting with other people and i got my you know as i said i got my job i got my family i got other stuff to do so uh all that being said let's get on to talking about today's episode so this is again going back to my kind of documenting versus creating uh theme from gary v but um really kind of just telling you some stories from my life and and then learning some lessons from them in real time myself, but also sharing them with you. So here's the story. Um, Recently, our dishwasher broke, right? Dishwasher broke. It happens to the best of us. And as has been the case when I've spoken to other people about that, there aren't any bloody dishwashers in the world that really last very long without breaking. Maybe it's because we fill them up with crap and food and they break down. But anyway, it's a difficult thing to keep going for a long time. The place we bought last year, they installed the cheapest dishwasher known to man um, just to sell the house probably. And so I knew it was going to be only a matter of time before it died a miserable death and forced me into having to get a new one. So the first bit that was interesting was is that whilst we pondered what dishwasher we were going to get and ordered it and all the rest of it, we had to wash the dishes for a while. So that was kind of an interesting exercise in, um, I don't know, something about what... some. This, multi-faceted angles to this um one of them is that i actually like washing dishes because it makes you as a family do something together so if i wash the dishes and one of my kids is drying we're all in the kitchen we're talking there's no tv there and we're doing an activity together so it's it's a glue towards community which is kind of cool but it also gets bloody old after a while who wants to wash dishes after all um so that was and i remember actually my older brother washing dishes uh (laughs) when we were kids and we used to make up wraps while we were doing it they weren't very good um but yeah we'd rap about washing dishes and make each other laugh and splash each other with uh soap and stuff like that just to pass the time but it was kind of fun right um So anyway, that went on for a while until after a few weeks, the kids got bored of that and it wasn't bonding anymore. It was just uh, 
they were getting bored of it. So we ordered the new dishwasher and I ordered it for it to be installed because I thought, right, deliver the dishwasher, get it installed, job done. I don't have to worry about it. What happened the day before they delivered the new dishwasher, they phoned up and said, OK, so we're delivering your new dishwasher. We bought, we bought a Bosch dishwasher, by the way, as well, because apparently out of all the crappy dishwashers in the world, this is supposed to be the least crappy. So we went with that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, when, they were, when they were coming to drop it off, they said, right, in order to take away your old dishwasher, you need to disconnect it and have it ready for us. So I said, okay, okay, sounds good. And then as I put the phone down, I thought to myself, well, if I've got to disconnect the old one, then I might as well reconnect the new one because wouldn't it just be a reversal of the same thing? Makes sense, right? Take off the drainage pipe um, and the hot water pipe and the electricity and then you're off and then just reconnect it. So I phoned back to the place I bought it from. I said, hey, you know that $180 you charged me to hook up the new one? Can I have that back, please? Because I'm going to do it myself. Check me out, Mr. Independent. Um, and I thought, well, you know, it only took me half an hour to unplug it. So how long could it possibly take to plug the new one in? Even if it's an hour, I'll go with that. And uh, it'll be kind of a, a learning experience at the same time. Little did I know that at almost midnight the same day, I would still be going. And this was nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so... Um, First of all, learning something new is kind of humbling. So I had to figure it out. I, I I kind of switched off the electricity of the breaker and started dismantling and hooking things up and reading the instructions. I was like, I got this. I can do this. Figuring it out. Sliding the dishwasher around and leveling it on the floor and screwing it into the cabinet. And then my first hurdle came where I tried to run the um I tried to run the drainage pipe and connect it up to the current system. The current system consisted of a um a garburator, which for those of you that don't know, because I don't know if I'd ever heard of them before moving to Canada, but it's one of these things like a um, goes in the sink and it crushes fruits and vegetables and com compostable stuff and puts it down the drain, which is actually turns out is terrible for the environment. So people don't really use them as much anymore. But anyway, there's a defunct one of those in my under my sink and uh, the drain plugged into it because it still ran water through it. It just didn't grind stuff up anymore. So I tried to plug it in and tried to plug into that and I had the wrong size uh, hose. So I, off I go to the hardware shop, walk into the hardware shop. Hello, Mr. Hardware Expert. So I got this hose, but I'm trying to plug it into this old garburetor that doesn't actually work, but it does the job. And so can you help me find the right size hose? And he's like, oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to, you're just, you're basically like deferring imminent issues by uh, plugging that in. So what you should do is take all of the plastic PVC black piping from under the sink and just replumb that thing and uh then you can just do a drain pipe straight out you don't have to take out the old garburetor it goes straight down connect your dishwasher into that and bob's your uncle off you go and i was like uh now i'm overwhelmed now i'm overwhelmed so he the guy was very nice actually and he helped me collect all the pieces and he said right you're gonna have to measure these gaps and cut the pvc pipes and you can get screw together ones or glue together ones and if you're using the glue you got to do this and then you're going to need a new basket for the sink you should put plumber's putty underneath it and and I was like feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And he said something to me along the lines of like, you're going to be here three times. You're going to originally come in for because you don't know what you want. Then you're going to come back in because you got the wrong stuff the first time. And then the third time you'll finally get what you want. And I laughed and walked away with my bits and pieces that I picked up and installed them all under the sink. And uh, it was hard <laughs> just because I didn't have great tools and I didn't know what I was doing. So anyway, for the big crescendo, I connect it all back up, turn the tap on and under the, uh, what's it called, the the P drain, I think it's called, the the one which kind of goes around the the U-bend, um, it was leaking water out of it. And I was like, oh my God, that's leaking water. And actually the sink um, where the, the bas basket sits in the sink, that was leaking as well. So much for the plumber's putty. So anyway, I fixed the one in the sink by actually putting the, uh, the rubber ring in that was supplied with it, which I'd missed. Um, and then the P-bend, I go back to the hardware shop again, get a different piece. And I did go back a third time. It was like quarter to nine at night. The shop shuts at nine. I run in there, got some more pieces, got it all back together. Um, and the guy said to me, like, if you ever think you're doing this wrong, just stop and, and chill for a minute and have a look. When that, So the bit that I omitted from this story is that when that thing started leaking, I basically said, fuck this. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. And I went on my phone and dialed plumber. 
or you know like emergency plumber phone this emergency plumber up and said hi i'm doing this thing under my sink i've had enough i've been doing it for 12 hours can you come out and just fix it for me and i'll pay you and he said, well, yeah, but he said it's like double and a half time. So it's like $300 for him to come out. And then even then he doesn't know if he can fix it. And he said, instead of me doing that, why don't you just take your time, go back to the shop, ask for this particular piece and you can do it yourself. And I was like, damn you and your practical advice. I just want you to do it for me. Why can't you just take all my money and do it? Um, but he didn't want to do it. Um, I don't think I don't think he wanted to come out and he was just going to charge me a lot of money for the privilege. Um, but he kind of forced me. There was that occasion and then one occasion after that where it failed again. And I said to my wife, I was like, I can't do this. And she's like, just go there now quickly before it shuts. So that was my last time at the hardware shop quickly before it shuts. I got there, got back, pieced it all together. And finally, then hooked up the dishwasher, ran the dishwasher um, and everything worked fine. And to date, that was uh, three or four days ago. It's all been working since then, and and uh, I felt very good about myself. So I think there was some good lessons in there for me. One is that a great lesson in patience. Um, that you know sometimes we're looking for the quick fix. The quick fix in that case was me phoning up the emergency plumber. But sometimes in our lives that lives that relates to running to the doctors and asking for some tablets or some pills or some something to take the pain away right i just wanted it to stop even though i was kind of even though the solution was around me even though if i persisted for a bit longer i would have figured it out and i did because i was kind of forced into it so patience i think was the key thing and sometimes taking a step back and saying looking at the bigger picture and saying where am i missing out on this um so i think you know that was really interesting and perhaps I was supposed to go through all that. Now, that probably wasn't a good use of my time because I would have made a very low hourly rate if I'd uh, I would have yeah, if I'd done that by the hour and paid myself, I would have made a, a very small amount. But I learned a lot and now I learned how the underneath plumbings of a sink work. I know how to install the basket things, I know to, how to take out and install a dishwasher. I learned a lot of skills which I'm kind of proud of and so it seems like doing the work myself made me appreciate the outcome more. Doing the work myself made me appreciate the outcome more. And that piece there, then I was like, right, anxiety podcast, bingo. Um, it just made me draw the analogy to like the life changes and the diet and the exercise and the friends and the job and the lifestyle and all these things is really the same thing. Like doing all that work makes you better and makes you appreciate how you got there it gives you the confidence because you actually earned it you actually built it right versus if you just came home from work and somebody put your dishwasher in you'd be like oh that was easy i can't believe i paid 180 dollars for that you know it was easy but that guy you paid 180 dollars to he had to learn and fail at some point and figure out how to do it um, and so if you do it yourself it takes time and effort and knowledge and pain and suffering and disappointment and failure which is very analogous to our journey that we're on in life so i think for sure um if you're going through struggles then having to do difficult things to overcome it will not only get you there in a in an organic authentic way but also once you have then achieved said results i.e you're not anxious anymore or you're less stressed or whatever your um thing that's bothering you is you you'll feel like you deserve to feel better because you did all the work to deserve it um and i'm not trying to upset anybody by saying this but if you just go to the doctors and take pills and then it doesn't quite work um or even if it does it's just it's just different that's it's, it's just different right it's not it's different because if you did all the stuff to really earn it and make the changes then the belief and the the confidence that you've cultivated internally because you've been through that turmoil i mean i go again and use another fitness analogy but um if you know if all of a sudden you you paid somebody to inject muscles into your legs or steroids or i don't know something um and all of a sudden you can run super fast that's a different journey than you going out every day in the rain in the cold in the sun in the hot and learning how to run and sprinting on a track and getting lessons and getting better to one day when you stand on the start line of the race of your life and you run it you have all of that knowledge and experience to pour into that
right? So just, to, it's interesting. Can you believe that I've dragged all of this out of installing the dishwasher? It's crazy. Um, anyway, this also then got me thinking about a recent thing, an email that I got just today, actually, and it kind of all came together for me. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about this email that I read today in a second. But before I do, I then went on a fixing friend lit, frenzy after I'd done that dishwasher. I was like, right, give me something else to fix. I'm on a roll, man. So I fixed like a closet door. I fixed the cabinet. Things that have been sat there broken for a long time um, took way less than I thought because I was in the right mindset to getting it done, right? So again, it's it's like momentum in your life. When you start doing one thing in your life, you're like, oh, if it's that easy to like incrementally feel better because I did this, imagine if I did one other thing. There's a payoff of doing something um, and getting satisfaction from it for sure. Um, and some things, there won't be any payoff. Like if I just had to clean my floors all day long, I don't think I would get satisfaction by saying, God, my <laughs> my floors are so shiny, right? So it's different things for different people. Something that makes you feel very satisfied might not make somebody else feel satisfied. That's just, it depends. Um, I used to, when I lived in one of our, old houses I bought we bought this house in the country and I was like this is amazing I've told this story before in different ways but one of the things was it had a huge back garden and probably ego related and growing up aspiring to having huge back gardens um I wanted this big back garden which was predominantly grass a couple of acres of grass and I was like right I'm gonna cut that grass and feel like a man I'll drive around on my tractor mower and drink a beer at the same time and so I went out and bought all the pieces and the machinery and then I needed a small lawnmower to go around the trees and I needed a strimmer or a weed whacker to do the edges and the first time I ever got assembled all this bloody machinery and started doing it all it took me the whole day and by the end of my whole Saturday um I was just like tired and sweaty and bitten by mosquitoes and I was like I'm not doing that again because unlike the dishwasher and the plumbing thing which hopefully works for a while touch wood um the grass thing i was like i gotta do this every fucking two weeks i gotta do it all the time or every 10 days in the summer or something so again like depending on what it is it will satisfy you in different ways right and i know that you know the other thing that really gives me satisfaction which is why i do this podcast and why i like talking to people is that um for sure doing something that benefits other people is a big you know big thing for me is why i like cooking so much I make like homemade um, uh, sourdough at home. I make my own cultures and make sourdough and bake that for my kids' lunches. Um, I used to make beer back in the day and wine. I don't drink as much as I used to. Um, but yeah, I just like making things from scratch and then having other people enjoy them. I used to brew beer in kegs and then I would put it on a kegerator in my fridge in my garage and I'd invite all my friends over and be like, come and drink free beer and let's have a bonfire. And everybody like getting drunk and drinking my beer and sat around the fire. I was like, this is it. Like I'm happy, happy as Larry. That was my favorite thing. Um, anyway, I got this email, which I will link in the show notes from this character called Mr. Money Mustache. He kind of talks about minimalism and thriftiness and, um, lifestyle and all that kind of stuff and he was talking on a similar theme to what I designed for the podcast today which was he was saying that when he built his house um, doing as much of it himself as possible made him very satisfied because whenever then he would look around he would be the, you know the equivalent of my thing every time the dishwasher gets run I'm like I installed that dishwasher and when the water's running down the sink I'm like I made sure that doesn't leak I put that plumbing in place that's amazing so he went through this same thing and every time he did upgrades he would be like yeah that's kind of cool but he also noticed that whenever he made upgrades he would feel good for a while and then it was short-lived and uh, this is also something I've touched on before but if you missed that which you may have done in the 260 odd uh, episodes I've done um, it's called hedonistic adaptation or hedonistic adaptation. I never know. Sorry about that. But hedonistic adaptation, let's say, which means that when you get something that you've been aspiring to have, let's say your brand new BMW, then it's cool. And then after a little while, you're like, yeah, whatever. It's just a car. It goes from A to B, which I've had recently with my car. Same thing. Um, same thing when you get a new house, you're like, this is amazing. Best thing ever. And then after a while, you're like, it's just a house. It's just somewhere to live. It's the same with your new iPhone or your new you know, pair of shoes, whatever, you just get used to them after a while. And that's what that means. So um, he talks, he calls that the happiness bump, which is an interesting thing and, and talks about how to basically uh, 
he talks about how to consider making things which are longer lasting than just these like hedonistic bumps in time um, because then after a while and he talks about success in his own life and how much he's achieved but he said he isn't any happier than before he got all that stuff so it takes you back to a baseline and potentially worse if it costs you money to buy the happiness then you also have the debt hangover which means that you then owe somebody money for all the shit you bought unfortunately um so anyway some of the i, I like some of the the tips that he had on this which i thought i would share with you so some of the tips to avoid the uh the debt hangover or the or or the the happiness bump of being short lived um i'll read a couple of these out cuz they're kind of cool um this is from him um consider each potential change whether it's a purchase a trip or a lunch out at a restaurant from the perspective of one year in the future I shouldn't have said it like that. From the perspective of one year in the future, <laughs> how much better will your life be in one year if you make this decision right now? So if I decide to buy that, how much better? So you're kind of foreshadowing and saying like, is this really going to make a difference? Um, another one which was cool was like, delay everything and space it out as much as possible. The anticipation of a great treat or of a treat often provides as much joy as uh, consummation. Simply by doubling your waiting period will cut your spending on this stuff in half. Um, I've heard Tim Ferriss talk about this before where he'll book a family trip for his mum and dad and stuff for like a year out because he knows that then the, the just by virtue of you looking forward to something for a long time, it's as much value as when you actually get on it, right? And sometimes even more. Sometimes you go on holiday and you're like, God, I enjoy, this is way better to look forward to than actually live in. Um, so there's some kind of good takeaways another one was is kind of to put a priority in upgrading things which um make a an ongoing difference or remove a a a strong daily negative or barrier to success so he said instead of upgrading your bmw from a 2009 to 2018 why not upgrade the barely functioning bike or shitty kitchen faucet to a good one you can use daily to make a real difference. So what are things that you're going to see all the time which make you feel better, which you could make a change to? Kind of cool, right? Um, and the last thing he said was, well, when when doing these, making these changes, if they're things that are challenging or make you learn um, or make you engage or strengthen friendships, then they're likely to give you more happiness. Um, and his last point, which I think is cool, is that to keep a list of your top life priorities on your fridge or on near your computer or somewhere else that you see many times a day. Stuff like better friendships, better parenting, health, financial independence, happiness, personal growth. And looking at the, this list before you do anything, whether it's planning a lunch or moving house or buying the new BMW or whatever it is, will help you then make better choices about things you buy. Um the old buyer's remorse doesn't kick in. So anyway, there's kind of a couple things which sort of came together for me, telling you about my dishwasher incident, which uh, is interesting, and then leading on to some hedonistic adaptation and uh, how you can figure out your own happiness bump and avoid disappointment. If you have enjoyed today's podcast, well, that's fantastic, and I'm very happy for you. Please leave a review for us wherever you consume this, if it's Apple Podcasts, formerly known as iTunes or Stitcher or iHeartRadio, Google Play, then go for it. Write a good review and I will be eternally grateful. If you have questions you would like me to answer on the show, go to anxietypodcast.com, click the contact page, and I can talk about them here. And uh, for now, that is all, my friends. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, Go to the anxietypodcast.com.